Okay, so AOSTAR have sent me a mini PC with one of the coolest features you can get on a mini PC. So inside I've got a 120 watt power supply with a decent sized barrel jack, a Clover power cable, and a full size HDMI cable. And this is a lot chunkier than a lot of mini PCs. So the actual square of it is pretty tiny, but it's very deep and has these massive vents on the side of it. And this is the one feature that I always want on mini PCs, Oculink. That gives you the ability to plug in a full size graphics card. Now this is an old GTX 1080, but it supports much faster cards because this connection is much faster than USB. So we've got Oculink, USB 4, two USB A's, a headphone jack and a power button. Got some nice thick rubber feet. And then on the back of it, we've got a couple of Ethernet connections, 2.5 GLAN. That's the barrel jack connector. We've got DisplayPort and HDMI and another two USB A's. And it's metal, feels really solid. I've been using this Oculink dock for over a year now and it's been perfect. It hasn't let me down, performance is great. Really, really pleased with it. And I've got the same processor as I had in my other Oculink PC, but this one has double the RAM and double the storage, double the fans, because there's two fans in here, which I'll show in a minute, and also it takes three M.2 drives. So I've been playing around with this for a couple of weeks now and been using it as my main Windows PC and I've been installing all sorts of things. There's currently some games installing at the moment as well, which I'll show in a minute. But before we do that, let's go through the specs on the Amazon listing. Now there will be a discount code which is valid for the whole of November, so have a look in the description for that. So the processor is a Ryzen 7 Pro 6850H, and I've tested this before and been really pleased with it. So eight cores, 16 threads, and it turbos at 4.7 gigahertz. Radeon 680M graphics, DDR5 RAM, which is always nice to see, and the NVMe drive is PCIe 4.0. The Oculink, which I've already said about, which I love. USB 4 support as well. Supports up to three displays, Wi-Fi 6 and 2.5G times 2. So they do their own little graphics card. I'll be using the one that I've already got. And here's the configuration. So two full-size 2280 drives and one 2230 drive. And this ice glacier cooling. So two fans and a heat sink in there. And these big vents on the side as well. So let's close this down. And let's go for a bit of road redemption now this is like road rash from back in the day i haven't changed any of the settings on this so it's running at 1920 by 1080 and the quality is beautiful so it's on very high settings okay so what fps are we getting around right about 70 fps there and you can take some <laughs> not like that there we go oh he's back and I've got my stickers. Oh, that's one was deflect. Oh, let's get out of this. Yeah, that's fine. Happy enough with that. Right, let's try something else. Another racing game, which I've tried on loads of mini PCs. Couldn't get it to work. It does work on this one. And I think it was an issue with the game before because it works really smoothly on this. Okay, so reasonable start. We've got a nice jump mode here and a boost and you can see it's a solid 60 FPS. It's one of the early tracks so it doesn't feel super fast but uh, you can see it's coping with it no problem at all. I also, I'm not conscious of the fan, obviously I've got the volume up on the game but it does seem to be very quiet. Yeah, definitely works fine. If we have a look at the settings just to see what it was on, because I just picked the default ones, and we're at 1920 by 1080, which is what the monitor is. Okay, so the next game might be tricky to run. So I've never played this before. This was free on Epic Games. Okay, so what have we got? It says 60 FPS. I, I was worried it wasn't going to give me 60. In match frame rate cap. So we say 120, we'll see what it does. Okay, yeah, it's up. There may be enemies around the extraction point. Stay alert. 
Okay, where's that coming from? <laughs> so in game, I reckon it was giving me about 80. I think I'm gonna have to try another game because I, I wanna try something that needs the graphics card. And actually the onboard graphics have coped really well with all of this so far. Assassin's Creed Valhalla has a benchmarking tool, but I'll try and play it first of all with onboard graphics. It's a demanding game. So initially let's just do continue and see what we get. Okay, so around about 25 FPS. Let's just have a little run through the village. Yeah, 23. Drop to 21. I mean, it doesn't look terrible, but obviously 21's not ideal. So this is quite a demanding game. So let's run the benchmark. So yeah, same as the in-game, 23, 24. This is running at 19, 20 by 1080. And there is room to lower the settings. So I could definitely lower things down to, you know, much lower settings and get a lot better frame rate. So it definitely would be playable. So the GPU is at 100%. And the CPU is only running about 17, 18%, 20%. Okay, so 27 average. Let's shut that down. Because you can't plug in an Oculink device when it's running. So power in first. Then I need to take the HDMI out of the mini PC and plug it into the graphics card directly, if it will reach. There we go, into the HDMI port. Now plug the Oculink cable into here and then into the front of the mini PC that I showed earlier on. And now when I power on the mini PC, it should power this on. If I had power going to this cable. Okay, so this time I've got power to the Oculink adapter. Now you can turn it on with a button. And there is also a power switch on, this is a, a main PC power supply. I've got a longer video on this Oculink adapter, but basically now if I turn the mini PC on, there you go, that's what's supposed to happen. So it wakes up the graphics card. And so if I lift this up, you can see the mini PC with the Oculink cable coming out the front of it and going into the connection on the mini's forum dock. And that's all powering the graphics card and it's all booted up and it's working but we need to install the drivers so if i go to the nvidia website and drivers geforce and the nvidia app so if i do download now okay so that's done let's open that up and close the browser now now and agree so game ready driver for me so you can see assassin's creed and the various different settings that it picks, and my rig. So graphics card, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080. So let's jump into the game, and then we have a run through. You can see it's doing nicely around about 50 FPS. So even though this is a very old graphics card, it's performing much, much better than the onboard graphics. So it's great to be able to have this option. That's why I think Oculink is so amazing. Right, let's run the benchmark. Yeah, it does look really good. So much smoother than it was before. And again, this is running at very high quality. So 67, so we've gained another 40 FPS. So I've unplugged the graphics card now, so this is just running as the normal mini PC. And I'm running three monitors. So this one is running with the HDMI socket on the back. This one is running with the display port, and this one is running from USB-C. So you can see USB-C from the front here. And if we grab this, we can drag it across all three monitors. So everything's all working there. Now, one of the things that was most intriguing about this one was the fact that it supports three NVMe drives. So let's open it up and have a look. Uh, this is moving. And it will be all the way over here as well, so... Okay. Oh, okay, so this bit comes off all as one piece. And then we've got the battery here. Interesting placement. And it looks like I'm going to have to take out this fan to get to the NVMe drives. Oh, these sides pop off. 
Interesting. Oh, and this has got the antennas. So these are plastic, so it's going to be good for the Wi-Fi antennas to be there. So the NVMe drives must be down here. Do I have to go through the fan to unscrew? I think I do. Let's try one of these. Still doesn't want to move. <laughs> So do I have to take this bit out? Ah, right, okay. Yeah, so the NVMe drive's under there. Okay, so, screw these back up again. So it's gonna be take off these four stalks. Okay, so the power button is stopping it from coming out. Okay, that's coming away. <laughs> this isn't the easiest. Right, so we can see the SSD that's in there. And we've got the cables going over the 30 mil one. So I'd need to reroute those. It might be how I've been doing it. Yeah, it probably is me messing about. So let's put this one in first. This is the 2230. And that shares the screw with the, whatever it is, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi aspect. And I've got another 2280 drive here, which has got Linux Mint on it. So I'm going to try and run three different operating systems, but you could have it as extra storage, and I really like that. So let's go back into place. Okay, that's in. It is quite fiddly, though. Okay, let's pop these columns back in. Okay, I'm just going to go for two of those columns because I'm not going to leave it uh, with all those drives in. So these plastic bits have little lugs that they clip into. That's the sides on. And then this will go, the inputs will have to get lined up first and then it kind of tilts forwards to close this bit. Yeah, that's it. On for a nice minimal setup. So all we've got is power going into the back of the mini PC and then USB-C is gonna power this monitor and also send the video signal to it. So let's power that up. And it'd be interesting to see what it boots from because there's three drives, two, two operating systems for x86. So there's Linux on one and Windows on the other. I would imagine it will just boot Windows. So let's log in. And all that's working. And so if we have a look at the drives, yeah. So the terabyte drive, 128 gig and 256 gig. This is the 2230, the 256 gig one. So if you want to put an operating system on this one, let's download Raspberry Pi Imager. So let's download the Windows version. And while that's downloading, let's get, let's go with Recall Box. So installing on PC. Okay, image is already done, so let's install that. Okay, recall box is just finished as well, so let's go back to Imager, close the web browser, and we're gonna do choose OS, scroll all the way down to use custom, and then pick recall box, and open. Choose storage. So I wanna install it on this 256 one, and then next, no changes and yes. Super, super quick. Okay, so now I need to work out how to boot into the BIOS. Looks like it's gonna be F7, so we'll give that a try. So I need to do function and F7 on this keyboard. Yeah, perfect. So, unfortunately, both of the drives are listed the same. So, I'm going to pick this one. Yeah, recall box. Perfect. I need a controller. Now, I bought this off Amazon. This is a wireless Xbox One adapter. And all you do is plug it into the device, and it works as if it's wired. So, now, if I switch this on, it will just find it and pick it up. There you go. So, now... 
when it boots, you can use this as a wireless controller, but you haven't had to pair it or anything. Okay, let's just finish it now. Loading systems. Recallbox actually comes with some games in it. So Genesis, yeah. Demons of Asterborg. And this will emulate right up to PS3. Um, I've played PS3 on other Ryzen Pros of the same processor. Okay, let's just check. Yeah, it's definitely working fine. Like Ghosts and Ghouls. This is cool. <laughs> nice start. Okay, so there's a gap that you have to jump there. Is it a double jump? What's that saying? Down and B. Oh yeah, okay. And if I want to quit out of that, select and start or select start and home, yeah. So I haven't had to configure this or do anything. You, you've just seen me download Recall Box and install it. So very, very simple. If I go back, I'm not sure what the most advanced system on here would be. It would be SNES or Mega Drive. I don't think there's anything else on there, but, it, but you can add ROMs. So if I quit out of this, and then boot up again, pressing F7. Let's see if that Linux works, which is something I installed on a different laptop, so it might not work, but we'll give it a try. Gosh, it starts up quicker on this than it did on the laptop I tried it on. So have we got access to the Recall Box share folder? Yeah, so this is where you put your games for Recall Box. So we've got ROMs, and the newest systems on here are PS2 or Wii, but I'm gonna go with PSP for a change, which is the handheld. So I've got some games on here. Pop that in. And then we can open this one. So this is my USB stick. And this is the recall box share folder. I just need to find my ROMs, PSP. So I've got Burnout Legends in there. So let's copy that over to here. I do like this uh, MX Linux. This is a KDE variant, which I'm gonna show in a different video, but yeah, I'm really pleased with it. So copying's just finished. So I can now shut down. I do like the, the three operating systems independent in there. And then boot up and tap F7. There we go, and recall box was the third one down. And it seems a shame not to have sound, so I'm gonna plug in to the three and a half mil jack on the front. Battery, 70%. That's my Bose speaker. And let's find PSP. There it is. Burnout Legends. And just to show this is working. Can't remember which one's boost, oh that's boost. So a very cool setup from AOSTAR, really like the design of it. It is a bit fiddly to get the NVMe drives in there, but once they're in place, most people would leave them in place, not be messing around with them like I always do. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.